now from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Medical Mondays. Hey, good evening to you all and welcome to Medical Mondays. I'm Jessica Ralston and we are talking once again tonight pain management uh, with our featured guest, Dr. Yellamelli from the Nashville Pain Center. So thanks for being back here. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And we're me. expecting a lot of phone calls last okay. night because you're pretty popular when you get on here. A lot of people have questions. So if you have a question for the doctor, give us a call here at 737 plus. Sure. Again, we're talking pain management and related issues. And I guess we'll kick things off starting about okay. starting with what a lot of people I'm sure come in and ask you about first thing is is what kind of medication can I take to manage Correct. my pain and there's a lot that that encompasses this yes yes uh, in chronic pain management medications are still the you know main um, ways you know uh, way of treating pain sure. one of the major modalities that we use is medications and um, typically uh, as I said, chronic pain can be of any, uh, from any part of the body, it can be of uh, any kind, it can be coming from muscles, nerves, joints, um, uh, any such sources. And uh, there are different medications that we use for different kinds of pain. Okay. So we always start off with the simplest one. Everybody knows about these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which are basically over-the-counter medications like ibuprofen, naproxen, um, you know, the famous brands are Motrin and Aleve. Um, so these drugs uh, are first actually used by the patients themselves mm -hmm. when they first get into these uh, painful conditions. Uh, but they are of uh, good value even in chronic pain. Even when the patient has been in pain for a long time, we we still find these medications useful in certain ways like uh, for example if a patient is suffering from arthritic pain it can be in the spine a spine can have arthritis there can be arthritis just not in the knees or hips it can be anywhere else in the body too wherever there is a, there are small joints mm -hmm. so when we do recognize arthritis we do use these medications but we use them only for short periods of time okay. not on a regular basis for years and years and years because they do have uh, major uh, problems they do cause major problems to the kidneys and they can cause ulcers in the stomach oh, yes. so um, so we do use those but um, there are some patients some people who just take them on a regular basis the caution is that it's not really recommended uh, to take these medications on a regular basis. Okay. Um, Do you have people come in and, and say, well, you know, you tell them I, we're going to put you in ibuprofen and they look at you like, listen, I'm already trying that. that that's yes. not going to be good enough. Yes, there of course. Um, first thing we do is, have you tried nostril And Most of the patients would, would say, yes, I have tried and sometimes they help. So again, uh, they do see the value of nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, but it can't be the mainstay of the treatment. They realize that. It's not that they have tried it and it's not going to work. It's going to work at cert in certain situations. Mm -hmm. Even in chronic pain when they have a flare-up, let's say, you know, everybody complains it's cold weather, rainy weather, my arthritis has flared up. Yeah. And at that time you give them some non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, you don't have to uh, increase the doses of your other medications. Just increase the dose or give them a short course of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and they help a lot in bringing down the flare-up. Right. So there is a role for it, but you cannot again continue these medications on a regular basis forever. Okay. All right. We have our first caller. Hi there, Brian. Hi. What's your question or comment? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I've got severe neuropathy in my legs and feet, and uh, it's going into my hands. And I would like to ask the doctor what he might refer uh, that would help me. So. Uh, have you already been diagnosed with neuropathy? Have you undergone tests that showed that you have nerve damage in your feet and uh, hands? Brian? Yes, ma'am. Hi, he, he was asking if you'd already undergone the testing that shows neuropathy in your, in your feet and hands. Uh, yes, I sure have. And uh, what uh, medications have you already tried for this, uh, um, this, this painful conditions? Uh, they have got me on the Lyrica uh -huh. and uh, I take the uh, methadone. Well, you're all, I mean, are they not helping? Uh, they, they are to a certain extent, but at night I have uh, really, really bad pains and it's hard to sleep. Well, uh, those two drugs that you're already on are pretty good for neuropathic pain. I mean, Lyrica is uh, pregabalin, which is a very powerful uh, medication that we use for uh, neuropathy. And methadone also is, is a narcotic. It's an opioid, but it has special properties that do help with neuropathic pain. 
But if those two are not uh, helping you, probably then we may have to look at other options. Um, maybe uh, have some procedures to help you with the pain. Maybe add in a sympathetic nerve block, or um, you know we have spinal cord stimulators uh, which help with neuropathic pain. I don't know whether you have been offered this already. Uh, no, sir, I have not. See, those are the options that we have, and maybe we may have to uh, adjust the doses of these medications. Maybe we may have to see what is uh, what else we can do. Is this from diabetes? Do we may we may need a better control of diabetes to help you with this uh, neuropathic pain. Do you have diabetes? Uh, yes, sir. I've got diabetes, and uh, I've been taking the glipizide and the metformin. Uh, mm -hmm. In okay. the morning and afternoon. Right. So we may have to work with your endocrinologist and see how well your diabetes is controlled. That's our first goal, to have the okay. diabetes controlled and then work on the pain. Many times just controlling the diabetes will be helpful in controlling your pain to a level where the medications that you're already on become more effective. Okay. And, uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your call, Brian. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. No problem. And we have another caller tonight. Tommy. Hi, Tommy. What's your question? Um, the pain center I go to is cutting back our pain medicine, and um, when you're giving pain 24 hours a day, it, it don't seem fair. I mean, I, I, I don't want to do it except, you know, run back and forth to emergency room, and it don't seem right. Yes, uh, what is the first thing you said? Uh, pain, the pain center he goes to is uh -huh. cutting back his medication. Oh, okay. So, um, well, uh, are you being offered other modalities of treatment, like other than the medications? Are they also offering you uh, procedures and uh, physical therapy and you know various other modalities that we use? Uh, are they being offered? Or are you being just treated with pain medications? No, we're uh, talking about really some wires in my spine and uh, putting some kind of a stimulator or something on. Okay, so they are planning on putting a stimulator on in, right? Yes, but I, I've been on this pain medication for for um, probably five years. I mean, it, it's going to be hard, you know, to yes, take uh, away from you like that. Correct. So uh, it's, that's a very interesting uh, question that you have now, uh, what to do next if the pain medications uh, doses are being decreased. So uh, the problem that we are facing now in pain management is high doses of uh, narcotics. I'm sure you're on uh, opioid medications, right? Uh, you're on narcotics. I'm on narcotics. I'm yes. on like Oxycontin, uh, 30 milligrams, and, uh, and Roxycodone, I'm sorry, and I'm on Kentonel pain patch, it's 100 MCL. You are on pretty high doses that's, of medication. Yeah, I'm not a doctor. I even know that. <laughs> so, high um, see, these high doses uh, in high doses, opiates are not uh, found to help the pain much. There, there is recent evidence, a lot of research being done uh, with opioid medications, and we have found that very high doses of narcotics sometimes end up causing more pain. Um, so. And also, the risk of accidental overdose, death, addiction, all these things increase 10 to 15 times after you cross a particular dose of na these narcotics. So staying on very high doses of narcotics permanently is not a good um, solution for you because you said that you've been on these medications for past five years and I'm sure you're still complaining of pain even even if they continue these medications at the same doses, there is no guarantee that you will not be in pain. No, I'm still in pain. Correct. I mean, it, it just makes it comfortable. I mean, at least I'm not going and to the emergency room getting shots. Of you, will, you know, every right. three, four days. So what we do, what we do in our pain center is, suppose you are on a very high dose of narcotics and no other modality is being uh, helpful. Let us say you try the stimulator and the stimulator doesn't help. They have tried some injections for you in the back. Those don't help. Then there is no way you can come down. Let's say we try to decrease the doses and you cannot tolerate the decrease in doses. Then we do have what is called intrathecal pump uh, placement, uh, implantation. So we start uh, implanting pumps that can directly pump the medication to your spine so that you get like a hundred times less dose of more of whatever medications you are on, a one hundred times less, and still get better relief. And you don't have to take these medications by mouth. And there is uh, still, of course, there are complications involved with this. It is not like 100% safe. But under expert hands, you should you should have good relief without having to take very high doses of narcotics. So that is the last option we have. 
So there are options for you. So just coming down on the doses itself may help you with the pain. If the, if the opioids themselves are causing pain, you may actually feel better when they decrease the doses. And when you try other modalities, you should have an open mind and try those because I think that is uh, the right way to proceed because if you stay on the same doses that you're on, maybe down the line you will need even higher doses. So where are we heading then? That was going to be my question, you right? Because right. You're gonna, he would keep needing a higher Co dose correct. and you're going to hit a point where you can't. You right, you cannot, and the risks become too high uh, to, to uh, justify the benefits, which are not much anyway. You're saying that you're not very active uh, right now on high doses of uh, narcotics. So it's better to look at other options and there are other options and we have many patients who have done really well after coming down on the doses they can actually felt better they have said their 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 own selves again and um, they feel much comfortable and their pain is also better controlled so there is it's not the end of the um, road for you to you know just stay on these uh, opiates at very high doses i hope uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I guess. I, mean, I, I don't know. It's, no, it's, you, hard to, it's hard to live in pain 24 hours a day. I mean, what, right. so. what we have noticed is also that when you are on high doses of opioids, patients have a very hard time coming off of them. Right. Even though we assure them and we, I can show you patients who have done better, of course, after fighting in the beginning, they have done actually better after coming down on the doses, but initially, the very thought of coming down on the narcotics makes you very anxious. I understand that. Patients get really very anxious when they are, they are told that the doses have to be decreased. But uh, at the end of the day, you, are the, uh, you will be actually happy that you did it. Right, because I mean, so you cannot stay on doses like that, especially of drugs like that, for the rest of your life, right? Correct. I mean, it's, Correct. It's, and in definitely the, not the answer. Exactly. And at high doses, narcotics can actually cause uh, multiple problems. As I said, addiction and accidental overdose and death are very common at very high doses. That is not the only thing. At very high doses, uh, you can have um, suppression of your immunity that can cause, uh, sometimes it can cause um, impotence. It can cause uh, osteoporosis, they are saying, over years. Uh, so, and even as I said, uh, it can increase your pain. It's called opioid-induced hyperalgesia, which means uh, the narcotics are actually worsening your pain. It's, it's also possible. So there are multiple problems associated with being on very high doses of these uh, opioids. So I think uh, they are doing the right thing for you. I think, uh, I think you should have an open mind and try these things. We are experts in this. We know nothing is going to happen to you. We're not going to make you hurt worse. Okay. Um. I just have a lot of trouble walking. I, I spent a lot of day. I mean, I, it, it just, it just gets, gets tired of hurting all the time. Yes, it may initially feel like you're going to hurt more, but as I said, there are other options. Once you come off of these uh, high-dose narcotics, uh, as I said, there are other options. In fact, the stimulator may help you better when you're on lower doses of narcotics. Even a pump is an option for you uh, in future if none of the other modalities uh, help. But staying on high-dose narcotics is, is not going to be very helpful for you in the long run. Okay, well, thank you. You All right, well, thank you. All right, well, good advice there. And we'll be back in just a minute. If you have calls, give us a call here, at, or questions, give us a call here at 737 Plus. Medical Mondays is brought to you by Nashville Pain Center.